If you're totally new to this strength training concept, it could be scary. Even if you are totally convinced of the fact that strength training does increase your cycling performance, that head knowledge might not be enough to overcome the hurdle of actually incorporating strength training into your training program. I mean, come on, we're cyclists. We wear spandex. We're not your typical gym rat, and I get that. But I also want you to overcome that because I do think that strength training is a huge asset and a huge thing that you need to add to your training program in order to see those gains. And if I can help you overcome the hurdle of getting into the gym, that's a win in my book. And I think I have just the solution for you, which I'll be talking about in today's video. The first thing the Volt website says on the website is strength and conditioning software to maximize your coaching impact. I'm surprised at how few people have actually heard of the Volt app because it's pretty legit. And I, after having used it for nearly five years now with myself and my athletes, am pretty convinced of its effectiveness. Now, I also want to note here at the onset of this video is that Volt isn't paying me to do this video. I've found it so valuable that I now want to share that value with more athletes. So the rest of this video, I want to explain to you why I'm convinced the Volt app is worth it. The first and biggest reason that Volt is so effective is because it's so easy. I mean, if it's not easy, we're probably not gonna do it. We live in a world where our phones are constantly attached to our hips, right? Like it is in our pocket every second of every day and we live with our phones. That's the world we live in, it's kind of scary. But Volt is an app that you download on your phone, you take your phone to the gym, and your phone is like a mini personal trainer right there guiding you step by step through every single workout. That is easy, and that means we'll use it. One of the best things that Volt has and uses is this form video. So as you're doing the workout, it will have a person right there showing you exactly how to do the exercise it's telling you to do. Because let's be honest, if you go into the gym and you look at the whiteboard and it says Bulgarian split squat, you're thinking like, is that a WWE move or like, what is that? But when the Volt tells you to do a workout, it shows you exactly what a Bulgarian split squat might look like. And if that's not enough, you can click on the written description and it'll give you cues on what to focus on when doing that movement. That's pretty easy and that makes going to the gym a lot less scary because it's telling you exactly how to do each exercise. In my last video, I mentioned periodizing your strength workouts in such a way so that you're doing your hardest lifting sessions during the time of the year when you're on the bike workouts are not so hard. You want this balance in the season of heavy lifting, easy riding, and then as your riding gets harder and harder, the lifting gets easier. And Volt does this. When you go in and create and set up your training program, at the very beginning, it's going to ask you, what are your goals? And we would input athletic performance. That's one of the goals. And then the next question right after that is, when does your competitive phase start and end? And you would input on the calendar when your racing season starts and when it ends. And Volt uses that information to generate a strength training program around your race season. And what I have found is that it typically has you doing your heaviest lifting, like I said, about one or two months before that competitive phase even starts. A huge question that cycling coaches often get in regard to the gym is, should I do upper body? And come on, that's a legit question. I had multiple people ask me that in the last few videos that I've done because cycling is a weight dependent sport. Meaning if you put on unnecessary weight, it could affect your cycling performance in a negative way. That's gravity, that's reality. We can't get around that. To, to not mention that would be to ignore some of the facts about cycling. It is a weight dependent sport. However, I think when people ask this question, uh, kind of behind the question behind the question is, how do I know that my strength training is cycling specific? And that is a legitimate question because we don't want to just go to the gym 
and do whatever workout they have on the whiteboard for the day, the, the bodybuilder workout or the fat burning workout. We want to go to the gym to increase our on the bike cycling performance. It's all about performance. Which means we should be doing movements and workouts that are aimed at that goal of increasing cycling performance. Good news, folks. Volt has you covered on this as well. They have a drop down with all kinds of different sports you can choose from. And what do you know? Cycling is one of those sports. And you may be immediately asking this question. Well, can I trust a cycling workout program that was created by gym rats? I think you can. I've been using Volt for multiple years for myself and with my athletes. And I can attest that it seems pretty legit. It includes all of the major cycling specific gym movements, including squats, deadlifts, lunges, step ups, all of these big cycling specific movements, they are the cornerstone or the foundation of the cycling specific program within Volt. The only critique that I have to Volt's cycling specific program is its lack of deadlift movements. But there's a super easy solution to this. They have this built in feature called the workout replacement. If you don't have a certain type of equipment or or whatever, or you just don't even like that movement, you can press this workout replacement button and it'll give you six other options to choose from that accomplish the same goal as the original movement. Now, when you press this button, it's gonna give you those six, but you can also choose from their entire workout library that includes 3000 plus exercises. Now, the Volt cycling program, it likes to use the Olympic lifts. Typically on one of the days, it will have you as the main set doing some kind of <clears throat> Olympic lift, a cling or a, what do you got, a cling or a, or a snatch? Yeah, I don't even, I'm not, I'm so unfamiliar with these that, that I just, I'm not a big fan of the Olympic lifts because I think you have to be a pretty advanced gym uh, person to be able to do those workouts. So I'm not a big fan of it. I like keeping things simple. So on the days that it has you doing an Olympic lift as one of your main lifts, a snatch or a cling, I replace that all the time with a deadlift. And there's actually a feature when you choose to replace a movement, it'll ask you, do you want to do this for just this workout for this block or forever? And I have actually created it in my program to where every time it gives me a cling or a snatch, it will forever change that to some kind of deadlift, a trap deadlift, a normal deadlift, all of those kinds of things. And that's an easy solution to getting rid of those overly complicated Olympic lifts, but also replacing it with a very important deadlift movement for cycling gains. And since we're on the topic of the, you know, workout specifics, I'll go ahead and talk about these two things as well. A little notes to be added here. So Volt typically gives you three workout days, but most of us are only doing one or two workout a days. And so the question is, well, which ones do I do? And I've come to notice that days one and days three are the hardest workouts. And I think that you should skip day two and do days one and days three, because those are going to be the, the two best workouts for the week. On top of this, you've got recovery time. So throughout the Volt workout, it gives you recommended recovery times. It even has a timer that counts down and then it'll ding when the recovery time is over, letting you know it's time to move on to the next movement. I have found that if you stay very strict with these recovery times, it's going to take you a long time to finish these Volt workouts. So I'm not very strict about the recovery times. I kind of just play it based on how I feel and I usually save some time by shortening those recovery times. One of the hardest parts of going to the gym is knowing how much weight to lift and how many reps to complete. And this is where the AI portion of the training comes in. Volt has this AI powered technology called Cortex that takes into consideration your individual lifting abilities and then generates a workout based off of those abilities. I'll explain how this works. It will tell you to do a squat at a light weight, and after that, it will ask you, how did that feel? And on a scale of one to 10, you will put one, it was very light, I could have done a lot more reps, or 10, it was really hard and I couldn't have, I couldn't have done any more reps. And then they've got all the options in between those. Like number five is I could have done three more reps. It uses this feedback that you input to then in the middle of a workout, generate how much weight you should lift and how many reps you should complete for each movement throughout that workout. 
this is pretty cool because there are some days where maybe you're lifting after you do a hard workout and you just can't lift as much or you're just not feeling it that day and Cortex will automatically adjust that day's workout so that you're lifting less than normal. On the other hand, if you're feeling really good, you're really fresh, Cortex will use the feedback that you're putting into it pro to progressively increase the amount of weight you're lifting throughout the workout so that you're actually getting in a really good workout. That's pretty legit. Because of this Cortex feature, you now don't have to worry about how much weight to lift and how many reps to complete because it literally just tells you. What do the actual workouts look like? Well, I'm going to explain to you what a typical structure looks like on a Volt workout because I like the way that they structure their workouts. First, they have you do a five to 10 minute warm up. This is kind of like full body, some little bit of stretching, just some muscle activation to get your muscles ready to go. Now, the first set you're gonna do is usually some kind of lightweight or body weight explosive movement, some jumping, some box jumps, stuff like that. We would call these plyometric workouts, and these are more focused on your fast twitch muscles, your explosiveness, all of these kinds of things, because we want to do those early in the workout when we're the most fresh so that you can be more explosive in those movements and get the most out of it. Now, then it goes on to your main set, what I would call your main set, and this is gonna be those big cycling specific movements where we're lifting a lot of weight. This is your deadlifts, your squats, your lunges, things that you can do to lift a lot of weight and actually get those neuromuscular gains. It's usually going to pair these or superset these movements with some kind of body weight, upper body workout, like pull-ups, push-ups, things like that. I personally think that that's beneficial to do body weight upper body because you're going to get stronger upper body strength, but you're not gonna put on unnecessary upper body weight. After the main set, you'll go into your, what I would call the secondary set, where it's gonna be very hamstring focused. This is gonna be some hip extension, leg curls, usually paired again with some kind of upper body movement. At this point in the workout, you're not lifting heavy weights. You've already completed that in the main set right before this. And then to finish it all off after this secondary set, it usually does, has you do a final set of some uh, hip movement or some core exercises to finish it off. Now, you may be thinking that sounds like a pretty long workout, and you're right. If you remember my last video, the main study that I was citing where it said that there was a 17% in time to exhaustion after an eight week training protocol, the training protocol that they incorporated was only a four by four workout, meaning they did four sets of four reps near max of these half squat exercises. And they concluded that that was only a 20 minute workout that they had added in a couple days a week for these cyclists. And it elicited a 17% improvement of time to exhaustion. Now, you might be thinking, well, this workout isn't 20 to 30 minutes, and you're right. These Volt workouts are usually somewhere between 45 and 60 minutes to complete. And my thinking is, yes, a lot of the movements that Volt has you do, these upper body movements, these hamstring movements, these accessory, if you want to call it, movements, might not have the science to back them up that say, do these and get better, but I think there might be a lot of other reasons to incorporate these other movements into your weight training program, like overall body strength and sprinting. If you're a sprinter, you probably could use a little bit more upper body strength or injury prevention. Maybe just doing some of these other movements increases your uh, susceptibility to getting injured. You could get in and get out and only do the main lifts in 20 or 30 minutes and skip all that other stuff. And while I do think that that would be effective, and if you're crunched on time, I would definitely suggest you do that versus not doing anything at all, because those are the main things that are going to make you better at cycling. But I also think that if you're already at the gym and you're already in your gym clothes, you might as well do another 15 or 30 minutes of, of exercises and get the full effect of the gym. You're probably wondering how much it costs because this app does seem pretty legit. It costs about $15 if you're gonna use it individually per month or $99 for a whole year's subscription. That's not too bad. Or because your main goal is cycling, you could get a cycling coach through Ignition Coach Co 
and volt comes with it. Yeah, that's right. You heard me right. We don't charge any kind of additional charge on top of what you pay for coaching to be able to use the volt app. Every athlete that signs up for coaching through Ignition Coach Co. has access to the Volt app as a part of the coaching. That's awesome. We are so convinced that Volt works that we give it to all of our athletes. I'm a big fan of strength training for cyclists because I believe that if you go to the gym, you're going to be a better bike racer. And the Volt app is a huge tool for helping everyday folks like you and me make strength training a part of our training program. Now, if your goal is to make it to the world tour, then you could probably justify working with a personal trainer in your gym sessions. But for the large majority of us, we just need to incorporate strength training into our everyday training program. And Volt makes this very doable. That's all I've got for this one. Be sure to check out all the ways that you can support my video creating abilities below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.